What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 23 of the Go language programming tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be building off the last video where we've been talking about Go channels. So in the previous tutorial, we just showed a simple example of basically sending and receiving values over these channels. Uh, but we've kind of wondered, uh, kind of run into a few things and we're wondering about a few things. The first thing is, um, first of all, we, we did at least notice that we didn't seemingly have to synchronize these channels at all. It appears that they've somehow been able to run and our program didn't finish until the values were there. Uh, but also we noticed that well, this is a little unfortunate because in a simple toy example, sure, you could just write out all the channels that you're going to run. But many times you might not know exactly how many channels you might have. Also, let's say you had just knew you're going to have a large number, maybe a few hundred, maybe a few thousand. Who knows? You don't want to have to write out all these values. Instead, you'd like to be able to iterate over them. So that's what we're going to be covering here, talking about all those things. First of all, the first thing that we want to just cover right out of the gate is uh, by default, the sending and receiving of the Go channels is blocking. So when we do basically here, this has to happen before we can attempt to print and before you know the function is over. So that's why we didn't necessarily have to use any synchronization. But as we're going to see pretty quickly here, we're we're going to need to. So so let's let's show like a more realistic example. So like let, rather than doing it this way. Let's say instead, uh, we're going to say for i colon equals zero, if I can type it, uh, while i is less than 10, I just can't type. And then we'll increment i. Let's go ahead and do foo over foo val and i. So this will be 10 of them. Sure, we could hard code the, the 10 receptions of, of data, but that <clears throat> that would be problematic and would begin to get even worse with 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 and so on. We'll just do 10 for now, though. So we can run those. Now, once we have those, how do we receive them in uh, without having to hard code every single value? Well, uh, at least the one magical thing about Go is the range statement. It just can seemingly range over all kinds of things. So, so what we can do is we could say for item colon equals range foo_val. So we can actually just range over that foo_val cha uh, channel. So however many values it has, awesome. We could do format dot print line item. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that and see how we're doing. So go run go tut dot go. Oh, we have, uh, okay, so all, at least the first time through, uh, we're having an issue of all the Go routines uh, being, oh, okay, so, here, so first of all, we need to, um, we need to convert this to be an actual Go routine. <laughs> so let's fix that. Uh, let's go ahead and save that. Rerun that. That's not the error I was expecting. <laughs> okay, cool. Now we've got what I was hoping for. So, um, so as you can see, we, we ran it with them being Go routines. And actually, we got all the values we wanted. If, if you look at it, I mean, we definitely ran it where i was equal to 9, right? Because we got a 45. Uh, but then we get this error here, all Go routines are asleep, deadlock. So what's happening here? Well, uh, looking here, basically, we can see that... Um, that basically, like, range knows it wants to iterate over foo val, but there's really never a time where we know that foo val is, you know, done, right? So one way that we can at least finish the, the, the channel is to initiate a close. So we can close uh, foo val. So we could do that, and then we could run this. And then we see nothing happens at all here. So what's going on there? So you might be thinking, hey, I've seen this before. All we need to do is synchronize because basically what's happening is all the Go routines are, you know, off running, but then we're finishing the program before they come back, right? Well, you're right that we need to synchronize things, but you're wrong about why. So to exemplify this, what I'll do is I'll just import time. And I know you'd rather me do it in parentheses, but it's just quicker this way. I just want to show an example real quick. Time.sleep, uh, time.second times two. Okay, so we'll add the sleep 
where this will kind of confirm or deny uh, whether or not it's an issue of the Go routines running. So we'll just go ahead and run this real quick. And now we actually get to an error. And the error is that we're panic, we're trying to send on a closed channel. So what's happening here is we're closing the channel and we're actually closing the channel, not reaching the end of the program. We're closing the channel before we get to send everything over. So like before these are even done iterating, the channel's been closed and boom, we're, we're trying to send these values, but we close the channel, <laughs> right? So yes, we do need to make sure we uh, synchronize, but this time it's for a slightly different reason. So uh, we've done this before. Um, so the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is, well, I guess we could have uh, we could have done the parentheses because we do need a second import now. Um, and that's going to be sync. So format, sync. And we know we've done all this before. So let's go ahead and var weight group. And the weight group will be type sync dot weight group. Um, the other things, let's see, all the things that we need to do. First of all, in when since we're going to use a weight group in the actual function itself, uh, in the Go routine, we need to defer weight group dot done. We need to make sure that runs. Send over the channel. That's all fine and dandy. Um, each iteration over when we do like call the Go routine to run, we need to weight group dot add one every single time. And then what we want to do is before we close the channel, we need to do a wait group dot wait. Um, so we wait for all these to basically finish. Then we close the channel. Then we can iterate over everything. So let me close this. Let's, um, and then the other thing I'd like us to do is like right now we're blocking. So let's just save this real quick and then rerun this. So we end up with this just monstrosity of an error. Um, and what we'd like to do now is use buffering instead. So let me just add in like a buffer here. So foovow, we know we have 10 items. So what we could do to add a buffer is just comma and then whatever the buffer is. And these are in items, it's not bytes. So, so, so 10 um, basically we want to buffer for 10 items. So, um, because basically we don't want, well, first of all, we don't want our channels like normally channels are blocking on the send and receive. Um, and that's great if you need it to synchronize your, if you need to synchronize them for whatever reason. In our case though, um, we don't need that. We have our own form of synchronization and that's only going to cause us trouble. So, so we're going to use buffering. Now they're not going to be blocking and then go run, go tut. And sure enough, finally, everything works um, and uh, we have our, our, our return here. So interestingly enough, that almost went in perfect order. There's a, there's like really only one thing that got was different. Anyway, there we go. That's better. <laughs> anyway, um, so at this point, we can see that we've got, um, we now know how to use Go routines, uh, how to synchronize Go routines and then also how to send and receive values over channels with our Go routines. So at this point, we're actually ready to apply all of this to our, our uh, news aggregator web app, which at the moment takes about five entire seconds uh, to load. And our hope is that we can hopefully get that to be a much lower number. So in the next tutorial, what we're gonna be doing is actually applying all this to our pre-existing web app, see how we do. Um, and yeah, so if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.